everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a art journal page that was inspired by our Art Joy of Sharing July 2021 mood board. We have these mood boards each month in the art community over on Facebook. You can ask to join that group using the link below. Just make sure that you answer the questions that pop up when you ask to join because those help us keep robots out and people who are just trying to sell stuff. So just do that, answer the questions and you'll be fine. So a mood board is a collection of photographs that can inspire you to do a project. It doesn't matter what kind of project, it might give you ideas for shapes, it might give you ideas for colors, or it might give you an idea for an actual image that you're gonna put on your artwork. Um, this month I did make the mood board. We trade off between the pick stick challenge and the mood board. And so next month Peg Robinson will make the mood board and I'll make the pick stick challenge back and forth, back and forth. Those are two challenges that we always have in our art community. So the number one picture on that little mood board was that picture of the watermelon because that to me says July. I mean, watermelon is just... I guess where I grew up in Eastern Oregon, there was this place called Hermiston and Hermiston had the best watermelons. And when I was there recently on my travels, everyone kept saying, have you had a Hermiston watermelon yet? Have you had a Hermiston watermelon yet? <laughs> because they're just the best. And so to me, summer and July just says watermelon. So I saw that cute picture with a piece of watermelon on a stick. And I thought that is the perfect thing for July. So then I, I built my mood board around that using, you know, the reds and pinks. Um, I thought about roses that bloom in July and those are red. I thought about travel, um, you know, going on summer vacation, going maybe to camping or to an amusement park or something like that. And then I thought about the shape that a slice of watermelon makes. And those are kind of the things that happened with this particular mood board for this month. So to start my page, this, this is a Dilusions Dialogue Journal. It has some um, manila cardstock pages, and this particular one has stripes on the page so that you can write, but I just use it for an art journal. Um, I don't need to really write on the lines, although you could <laughs> if you wanted to. Uh, this product is produced by Ranger Company. You can find it probably in scrapbooking stores and things, or else online. I always have... Um, stuff linked down below the video to products that I use and to my Amazon store. So you can use that link or if I put the links down below, you can use those. This is a, a good journal for traveling. So the paper, of course, being manila cardstock is somewhat absorbent to water, water soluble media, right? So what I did was I took uh, some stencils. Uh, those were Two of them were from Heidi Swap, and then the other one was from um, DecoArt. And I used heavy gesso and stenciled through the stencils. The reason I picked those stencils, if you see very at the very bottom on the right-hand side of the mood board, there's this kind of this, this pattern made out of different shades of triangles and angular things like chevrons and things and I, I thought that was an interesting pattern so I was going for something kind of like that so I gessoed the I, I stenciled through with gesso and gesso seals the page so in the places where there are gesso the page is no longer as ab absorbent but then in the other spaces it is absorbent so when you put the colors on with the watercolors and those are just uh, different brands of watercolors that I've created a palette out of um, I used reds and blues and a little bit of ivory black and some indigo uh, colors. Then the watercolor absorbs into the absorbent parts of the paper, but it kind of bounces off where it's been gessoed with the stencil. So you end up getting a pattern. The next thing I did is I had an idea, um, kind of an image of my head of when you are eating a, a big slice of watermelon and it, and it's running down your face, you're smiling, but the, the shape of the watermelon also is a smile. It's like a big smiley shape. And so if you hold it up uh, against your face to eat the watermelon, then you have a smile. So I thought 
that that would be fun to put on my page for July. So I have just a plain piece of paper and my uh, what kind of mechanical pencil. It's got soft graphite in it. And I drew my image onto this piece of paper. I could have drawn it onto the page, but I wanted the page to dry a little bit before I started messing with it again because I got it pretty wet with watercolor and then spritzing and, you know, it, it's wet. So I needed it to set it aside to dry for a while. So I drew onto another piece of paper. This is just paper from my printer. It's nothing fancy at all. And then I trimmed that out a little bit and I'm gluing it down with a YooHoo glue stick. I could use matte medium, uh, but again, this, this is a quick process and I just, I want it to glue down quickly. I want it to dry quickly. Um, so the YooHoo glue stick works really well. <clears throat> I haven't always been a fan of glue sticks, but this particular one, this one called YooHoo or U H U, however you pronounce that, um, it really works for art journaling. Of course, art journaling isn't going to be subjected to much of anything. The page is going to get closed and then it will be inside a book. So it's not going to take much abuse. The, the book gets opened and closed, but that's about it. So it works great for this. It's already dry. It's already sealed down. And I can move on to uh, marking in the illustration lines of my drawing. And for this time, I'm using my Pentel Pocket Brush. This is a, a brush pin with a flexible brush, a synthetic brush on it that has cartridges. When, and when the cartridge runs out, you can replace it with another cartridge. Love this product. Um, it's India ink. So when it's dry, it's permanent. And it's great for mixed media for that reason, because I can go with wet media over the top of it and it's not going to run or smear. So I like that product a lot. Then I got out my King Art gel sticks, mixed media gel sticks. Uh, these are soft, squishy pigment, almost like a lipstick. And it even dials up like a lipstick. You know, you turn the bottom and the more comes out the top. And these, I think, are similar to other ones you might see on the market. But these ones happen to be made by King Art. And I think I have all the colors, I think. <laughs> Maybe even some duplicates because I saw them one night when I was awake um, as an ad. And I said, oh, those are cool. I want to try them. And so I bought them. You know, one of those things that happens at night when you're sleepy and you just click the button and click your PayPal and you're done. And then, then recently I saw them again with more colors, like another 24 colors or something. And I'm like, okay, I want those too. I want all the colors, which is a problem I have. I do usually want all the colors. <laughs> so I ordered them again. So I have a lot. I've got them in these little baskets. They come in a very nice container that keeps them very neat and organized. But I just wanted to put all my different products, all my different writing product products into these baskets. And then I just stack them up one on top of each other. And I can see what I have and I can see... Um, you know, what I can grab. They have little uh, tags tied to the end of the basket so that I can see what's in each one. It's working out pretty well. It's part of my new cleanup and organization of my studio, which is not complete. I was hoping I would get it all done before I went on, on my trip because my friend was here and she was helping, but then it didn't get all done. And so now I have to work on it by myself. <laughs> Bummer. So I'm coloring, then I am blending with my finger and I have a baby wipe in my hand and I can just touch my finger onto the baby wipe and get it a little bit wet. And I mean, not a lot wet. If you, if you blend it with the baby wipe, which you can, you will remove a lot of the product. So I wanted to keep the product on the paper, but just blend it in a little bit. So touch, touch blend, blend, touch, touch with my finger. Also, that cleans each color off. Move the baby wipe a little bit. Cleans each color off my finger before I go to blend another, another part. I was fairly uh, annoyed with the hands and wrists and arms on this piece. <laughs> 
I need a reference photo to draw hands. I, I just, they're so weird. They're so weird and they can go in so many different positions. And so I, I'm not satisfied with them, but you can tell what they are. But, but the wrists started to get super skinny at the bottom and I did have to repair that a little bit. But I'm, I'm happy with the pocket brush, the Pentel pocket brush, because it will write over these gel sticks. The gel sticks are slightly, I guess, I guess I would say waxy. They do blend down really nicely. They're creamy, but they also have kind of a coating on them. And so other things like Posca pens and things sometimes don't want to write over them. And it might be because they're still a little bit wet. Uh, maybe when they dry down a little bit more, they can be written over better because I did, I did at the very, very end, write with my black Posca pen and it seemed to be working fine. But during this process where I'm putting lines on, coloring, then put going back over the lines in some cases because I've colored over them too much, I, I do have a problem with writing over the top of the product. Another option would be a Stabilo All pencil, which is something that you see a lot of mixed media artists use. It's a water soluble pencil and it will write over anything. So um, you could use that as well to go, you know, to add back in your illustration lines and stuff. But um, the Pentel Pocket Brush is pretty awesome, I must say. I must say. <laughs> So I did kind of widen out the wrists down at the bottom with some white gesso and then go back over with the, the gel sticks to color it back in. I got a lot of smeary color on the hands too, which um, wasn't ideal, but I still had some gesso left on my palette paper. And so I went ahead and added back in some triangles with that stencil from Heidi Swap and also put some on her blouse just to give it a little bit of interest into kind of carry over that triangular pattern into all parts of the composition. Now I'm adding highlights. I've got my white Posca pen and you'll see me my hand move to the right a lot to kind of prime it and to to scrape it onto paper to make sure that nothing clogs the tip. You do need to be careful about that when you're writing over this type of a product because it wants to gather into the tip of the pen. And so just write it off onto a piece of scratch paper or pump it down, you know, press it, press it and, and pull it back up, press it and pull it back up to get more product flowing to keep your uh, Posca pen clear of other gunk. Back in with the uh, pocket brush again, um, fixing up some of the lines. Then I decided that I wanted some words over on the left hand side. So I got out a stamp set. Now you can use any stamp set. It does not have to be this one. But uh, if you were looking for this one, I will tell you the name of it underneath the video and you can go to eBay. This is a discontinued stamp set from Stampin' Up from a long time ago. I have no idea how long it's even been discontinued, but I love it. And I'm not going to stop using it just because it's discontinued, but it's hard for me to give you a link to go buy it if you really, really want it because it doesn't come from Stampin' Up! anymore. But I do notice that on eBay, there is always people selling Stampin' Up! stamps, you know, old ones. I guess everybody bought it and then nobody wants it anymore. I don't know, but I will look up the name of this particular one and I will put it down below the video. So you can go search eBay if you really, really, really must have it. But I stamped on there with some permanent archival ink, Watermelon Smile. I have the upper and lower sets. Had them for, you know, probably 15 years at least, if not longer. So they're old, but I think they're, I like the writing on them. So I just continue to use it. And I'm sorry that it's something that's maybe a little bit harder to get. So then I used the uh, red gel stick to add a little bit of red color into the letters that you'll see in the close-ups that the letters are kind of like scratchy. They're not filled in. Like maybe there was a sketch and then inside was scratchy, 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 filling in without like completely filling it in. So you can add a little bit of color 
to them because of that. Then I also added highlights with my white Posca pen. And then I'm going around the edge of the page with some black ink to give it a little bit of a frame. Uh, permanent black ink and an ink pad. I just rub it on there right from the pad. And then the rest of it is just kind of touch up, um, you know, bringing back in the pins, touching up areas, fixing things. And then I really, I felt I needed one more element and I put some red on the triangles and I thought that made a cute blouse. But then I still needed something down here on the left hand side. So you'll see what I did. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Of course, you can leave me a comment or question below. You can subscribe to my channel. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers, so I'm, I'm looking for that. And then, of course, you can share this or pin it. Anything like that helps my channel grow by helping other people find me. So to finish it up, I decided I would just add those same colors. Um, you know, this blue, ultramarine blue type color and some red in these little chevron shapes like I put in the background to kind of almost create that idea of a mountain in the background, but definitely a whimsical type of mountain. You wouldn't be blue and red like that, but it, it, it closes in the horizon line and also brings those colors from the blouse all the way across the page. So it finished the composition for me and I was, I was happy with that. I added a little bit of white splatter because it's kind of a thing I do. And then that was pretty much it for today's page inspired by the mood board. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.